Huge crowds are expected to come out today for the final launch of Space Shuttle Endeavor. With just one more shuttle mission scheduled after this one, NASA is expecting thousands of extra spectators. And today's launch has an added bit of drama. Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords, critically wounded in a shooting in January, will be there to watch her husband, Mark Kelly, lead Endeavor into space one last time. And for more now, CBS News space consultant Bill Harwood joins us from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Thanks for being with us, Bill. Uh, it's my pleasure as always. Well, you know, the question a lot of people are asking is, will we see Gabrielle Giffords at today's launch? No, we don't think so. Uh, they're going to keep her pretty much off limits from the media. Uh, we might get a picture after the launch, a still frame, something like that, but uh, certainly nothing live. Uh, and I don't expect much beyond uh, some comments from her staff about how she enjoyed it, that sort of thing, and maybe a still picture. All right. Well, Giffords won't be the only VIP at that launch. Uh, President Obama will be in attendance with his family. Let's talk about his record when it comes to NASA. He signed off on ending the shuttle program. He canceled the Constellation program, canceled the moon landing program. Thousands of NASA contractors are out of work and unemployment on Florida's Space Coast is at 11 percent. So with all of that said, how is he going to be received today? Well, that's an interesting question. You know, I think, as you said, I think there's certainly a perception uh, that President Obama has played a major role in ending the shuttle program, but that's really not true. Uh, the Bush administration back in 2004 uh, told NASA to finish the station and retire the shuttle fleet uh, by the end of 2010, and then to take that money and put it into the Constellation program. As you said, that was the Bush administration's moon program, uh, and hopefully have permanent bases there in the 2020s. Uh, when President Obama came into office, he hired a Blue Ribbon panel to go off and look at NASA's finances, what sort of budgets they might expect, and the panel came back and basically said NASA can't afford to do that. There simply isn't enough money in the budget uh, to carry out the moon program, and so the president ordered NASA to change directions, and it's a rather dramatic shift. Uh, he told them to rely on private industry uh, to build spacecraft to carry astronauts to and from the space station, and then downstream long-range plans to uh, look into some rockets and spacecraft that can go out to perhaps asteroids or even Mars, but that's a long way down the road. Uh, but in the meantime, as you say, uh, unemployment's a big issue down here. The shuttle workforce is being pared down and will uh, virtually cease to exist here in a few months. Uh, and that's got a lot of people um, upset, as you might imagine. So with that said, uh, do you expect the president may not receive such a warm reception when he arrives? Well, you know, the the President of the United States is the leadership of the country, and I think the NASA folks recognize that. You know, it's kind of like the military services. Uh, they might not agree with some of the policies in place, but they certainly uh, respect the office, and I think they'll show him a, a, an enthusiastic welcome. I mean, you know, one of the things about uh, the end of the shuttle program here is the NASA workers are very proud of it. They want to show it off. You know, these big crowds come, and I think they really look for an opportunity to show everybody what the shuttle could do. And, and certainly that'll translate over to the president. Well, let's see what this shuttle mission can do. As for the mission itself, the details, what's on the agenda for Endeavor? Well, you know, it's interesting. The, the Mark Kelly, Gabby Gifford story and the arrival of the president really kind of overshadowed what's going on on this mission. But this is a, a very complicated, very ambitious mission in its own right. Of course, it's the 25th and final flight for the shuttle Endeavor. It's the next to last flight in, in the entire shuttle program. And the payloads on board really make this one a keeper. They've got a $2 billion particle physics experiment on board called the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer. Uh, this is one of those experiments that really probes fundamental questions about the universe. They're looking for what happened to the antimatter that was believed to have been created in the Big Bang 14 billion years ago. No one knows. Uh, they're looking for something called dark matter, which they believe is the gravitational glue that holds galaxies and clusters of galaxies from flying apart. They know it exists, but no one's ever seen it. Uh, and this instrument might see signs of dark matter. Uh, so it's got the scientific community quite excited. And, and from NASA's perspective with the space station, uh, this is the last major component that NASA plans to add to the International Space Station. So after this mission, assembly is complete uh, from the U.S. standpoint. They've been building this thing since 1998. And like I said, this is the last major component. So NASA's quite excited about this flight. And oh, did I mention, there's four spacewalks. So it's, uh, it's even more <laughs> complicated than that. There's a lot on the that, agenda. So. Not only this mission, but there's, absolutely. there's still one more mission left after this one. So what is expected as Atlantis makes the final voyage into space this summer? Well, Atlantis's flight won't add any hardware, but they're carrying up a lot of supplies and equipment. 
You know, when the shuttle stops flying, the space station is going to depend on much smaller Russian progress supply ships, European and Japanese supply ships that simply can't carry as much in the way of large components to the station. Uh, so what they're trying to do on Atlantis is get enough supplies up there to tide the station over next year uh, until some commercial rocket companies in the U.S. can step up, uh, build some new unmanned cargo ships to keep the station supplied. You know, Betty, when you think about six people on the station, it takes an enormous amount in the way of food, clothing, supplies uh, to keep them all going. And so with the shuttle stopping, that's, that's a major, uh, what do you want to call it, a roadblock on the yeah. way to keep the station supplied, and, and, and they're trying to get as much up there now as they can. That is a very good point. All right, CBS News space consultant Bill Harward, thanks so much for being with us. We do appreciate it. My pleasure.